If you really want to be going for top marks, then you need to have an appreciation of exactly where your marks are coming from. Um, so just remember that you have two different types of question. Um, you have KAA questions, which just assess your knowledge, application, and analysis skills. And then you have your KAA plus um, evaluation questions. Um, so if you look here, these, these keywords um, you need to be looking out for. So these are going to tell you whether your, your, your question is an evaluation question or a non-evaluation question. So here, you can see here, um, if your question has the word examine, discuss, evaluate, assess, or um, the phrase to what extent, it's going to be an evaluation question. Um, whereas any questions without these, these keywords in, they're going to be standalone KAA questions. Okay, so the next step in assessing um, the allocation of marks on offer for, for any given question, um, you, you want to be figuring out, okay, how many, how many marks are available for the evaluation component as opposed to the KAA component. So just remember, um, even within the evaluation question, there's still going to be KAA marks on offer. Exactly how many KAA marks on offer depends on um, the total number of of marks um, in this question. So you can see here that for any KAA, um, sorry, for any evaluation questions, the allocation of marks available to KAA is never going to be more than, or it's always going to be less than 50%. So here, if you notice for, a, for an eight mark question, for an eight mark evaluation question that is, um, you're going to have six KAA marks and two evaluation marks. Uh, for a 10 marker, there's a 6-4 split, and for a 14 marker, there's an 8-6 split. Okay, so now we've assessed exactly how many marks are on offer for KAA, exactly how many marks are on offer for evaluation. Um, if you carry on watching, I'm going to tell you exactly how you're going to pick up those KAA marks to begin with. So there are different strands of KAA marks on offer in your um, Edexcel AS level exam. Um, the first of these that you should be going to are your definitions. Uh, definitions and, and formulae. So um, if in the question or, or related to the question you identify that there's a key term that you can define or um, attach to that key term there's a formula so you're going to give that definition and give that formula. Just simply state it uh, but you don't really need to work too hard in incorporating it into your actual answer. Um, simply stating the definition, stating the formula, um, there are marks on offer for that. Okay so that's your first strand. Your second strand is going to be uh, diagrams. Um, so here, um, external costs, external benefits would be a good example. It doesn't need to necessarily need to be um, an analytical question where you're assessing um, quantity changes or price changes. If, if, if um, kind of related to, to the question, you know there's a diagram that you can draw, then, then draw that diagram. So um, if there's a question on external costs, external benefits, where um, you're, not, you're not analytically looking at um, the socially optimal equilibrium versus the, um, the market equilibrium, it doesn't really matter. You just draw that externalities diagram and you will get credit for it. Okay, similarly, for, for opportunity costs, if you're talking about opportunity costs, you know that you can draw your um, production possibility frontier. So the important thing to remember here is that um, you want to be shoehorning in um, diagrams into as many of these um, KAA um, style questions as, as possible. Okay, so that's definitions, formulae, um, diagrams. Next strand of marks are your um, actually kind of going to the nuts and bolts of the question and answering the question. It's going to be your identification point, so your reference to the extracts. So here, different ways you can reference the extract. Um, I think personally the, the best way to do it is referring to figures. So if there, there are actual numerical figures in the extracts um, that you can pull out and incorporate into your answer, then do that. But failing that, um, you can use quote marks and pull out bits from, from the extracts, or um, you can say in extra X, um, this, this point is made or an extra why this point is made. Okay, so identification and then your final strand is going to be for your explanation, actually um, answering the question if you like. Um, but as you can well see, if you've included these go-to KAA points, so your definitions and your diagrams in particular, it makes your life a lot easier and you have to pick up fewer um, of these explanation marks in your answer. <laughs> Okay, so let's whiz you through a past paper, May 2012, question nine. Um, questions are here, so first thing you need to be doing is um, assessing which of these are evaluation questions, which of these are your standalone KAA questions. So um, here you can see we have the word evaluate, the word assess, 
the word discuss in these questions. So these are clearly going to be your evaluation questions. Remember, there's still going to be a KA component involved, but these are your, um, these three at the top, or sorry, these two at the top are going to be your standalone KA questions, and these three further down are going to be your KA plus evaluation questions. And now that we've done that, uh, question A, uh, standalone KA question for four marks, relatively straightforward as to what you're going to do here. You notice um, in, in, in the question, it says, with reference to the titles of extract one and extract two, distinguish between positive and normative statements. Okay, so straight away, you've got two key words to define in that question. Um, positive statements and normative statements, so we're going to give a definition for, for both of those. And then it also says, with reference to the titles of extract one and extract two, um, so you're going to refer to titles of those extracts, in other words, um, your identification marks um, to pick up the, the, the remaining two marks on offer for this question. Okay, so part B, um, it says, with reference to the information provided, in your own knowledge, explain the opportunity cost of higher education to students. So this is a six mark standalone KAA question. Um, straight away it says um, explain the opportunity costs. Opportunity costs are key unit one term. We're going to give a definition for that. Remember um, you can draw a diagram to illustrate um, graphically what, what an opportunity cost is. And it's very similar to your production possibility frontier. I'd familiarise yourself with this diagram if you haven't already done so. Um, it is quite a useful diagram. It's, it's not really one that would spring immediately to mind um, if, if you're thinking about opportunity costs, but it is one that, that is applicable. Okay, so um, say we picked up one mark for the opportunity for, for definition, one mark for your diagram, um, data reference. So it says, with reference to the information provided, so that's a prompt that you should be um, picking bits out of the data and referring to that. So there's actually another one mark available for, I'm uh, sorry, there's actually two marks available for referring to the data for this particular question. So say we've picked up um, one mark here for your definition, one mark for your diagram, and say we've only picked up one out of the two for our data references, we need to pick up another three marks um, for actually explaining what um, the opportunity cost is in terms of this question. I'm not going to labour too much on this point, this is an exam technique um, video rather than a, a content video, um, but just, just briefly, talking about the opportunity cost of going to university, the opportunity cost um, financially of paying that £9,000 in tuition fees and also in terms, of, in terms of your time. So that's what I've got here. Um, so that's part B in a nutshell. Right, so part C, uh, 14 marker. Remember this is a KA plus evaluation question. Uh, and remember here, you're never going to have more than, or sorry, you're always going to have less than 50% of your marks um, available for evaluation. So it's going to be an 8-6 split for a 14 marker. Um, so remember, we're just looking at KA marks here. We have eight on offer. Um, evaluate the likely private benefits and external benefits of university education. Illustrate your answer with an appropriate diagram. So there, you have clear prompts as to how you're going to pick up your KAA marks. Um, private benefits, external benefits, you need to define both of these. Actually, they're being very generous here. And that um, mark scheme says that there's going to be two marks available for defining private benefits, and two marks available for defining external benefits. And then, um, <clears throat> so that's your definitions done. Diagram, four marks on offer here. Um, anytime the, the question prompts you to draw a diagram, there's going to be four marks on offer. And if you see, we've already got four marks for our um, definitions and we're going to get the further four marks for our diagram. So actually, uh, just by including those go to KA points, so the first two KA points you should be looking for in any question, uh, we've picked up all eight, um, all eight KA marks on offer for this question. But just um, remember, you, you want to be, uh, sometimes it can be quite difficult to see exactly where your marks are going to come from. You want to be hitting all of the bases, so don't forget um, to include examples and your explanation for this question as well. But as you can well see, um, we've got four different sources of, sorry, yeah, we've got four different sources of um, KA marks and off for this, for this question, and we only need to pick up eight KA marks in total. So you should really be getting full marks for, for, for a lot of these KA um, questions, or, or at least the, the KA component of a lot of these questions. So you should be starting to get a good feel as to uh, what you need to be looking out for in terms of prompts from within the question, and how you're going to pick up your KA marks. 
Um, so question D, it says, with reference to extract two and using price elasticity of demand calculations, assess the likely impact on student applications for an increase in tuition fees from £3,290 to £7,000. Um, so this is a 10 mark question. It's an evaluation question. In terms of your KA evaluation split, it's going to be six, four. So we have six KA marks to pick up here. Um, so straight away, looking at the question, it says, using price elasticity of demand calculations. Price elasticity of demand, that's a key term with a, def with a formula attached to it, sorry. Um, so you're going to include both of these. Fortunately for this specific question, um, you're only going to get one mark for either or your definition or your formula. Um, you're not going to get kind of one mark each separately for each of these, um, but you are going to get additional marks for performing the calculation. Okay, that's going to be that's quite quite um, an obvious thing to pick out given the way the question is laid out. Um, you're going to get four marks for that. Four marks for your calculation coming to that final answer. And actually, um, more often than not, if you are required to perform a calculation, there are going to be four marks on offer for that. All right. So we've already picked up five marks out of our. Um, 6KA marks, and we've still got two more sources um, to exploit. Now, with reference to the extracts, it says quite clearly here, with reference to extract two, um, blah, 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 blah. So we're going to make a reference to the extract. Um, it's actually two further marks available for that, if you haven't already picked up all 6KA marks. And then explanation. So actually answering the question, um, there, there, there are going to be further marks available for that. So you can see here four, four um, different strands, four different sources of KA marks, well, five different strands of um, KA marks if you, if you include definitions and your formula separately. We only have six marks to pick up. So you should be able to, 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 to appreciate that actually picking up all of your KA marks, it's not a particularly difficult exercise if you're including each of these um, different sources of your KA marks separately. Um, I'm not going to go into um, part E of this May 2012 question nine, because um, the, last, the last evaluation question on your unit one paper, it tends to be slightly longer. Um, and in terms of, of the evaluation that you need to perform, it's slightly different. So I'm going to, carry, I'm going to look at that in a separate video um, when I also look at the, the evaluation components of each of these questions separately. <laughs>